Hello everybody and welcome back to the Billings Wolves Dynasty as we are here in Lawrence, Kansas, home of the Kansas Jayhawks, Rock Chalk. So we are going to be taking on one of the best teams in our conference this week and is going to be the best team in terms of overall that we will face all year and they are definitely showing that they are a top 25 team in the nation. They know how to score the ball and they also know how to play defense, which is what is giving them that top 25 ranking. And the best team that their record is also incredibly good because their only losses are at the very beginning of the year and also a one point a one possession game against the number one team in the nation. And they are being led by some NFL caliber players and one being the ever powerful Jalen Daniels. Their running back room is also very good and we also need to be able to keep an eye out for Luke Grimm, their wide receiver. Now they definitely have some very good defensive players that are going to give us a good host of challenges especially up front in their top in their front four and this is going to be a very big game for the kansas jayhawks as this keeps them in the battle with alaska and washington state as they are fighting for that promotion spot now we will be doing this game the best team that we faced all year without our backup running back Dwayne Novak who picked up an injury last week and then re-aggravated that injury in practice. So let's see what we can do against the best team in our conference and the best team that we will face all year against some very good NFL talent. Let's see what we've got. So we will be receiving this ball first in this very big pivotal game as the Jayhawks have elected to defer to the second half and Jaron Walter will set us up on our own 25 yard line after that 20 three yard pickup. So now Timothy Strickland will start this game off and he will try and call his own number and that will not work against this front four. He'll lose three yards on the first play of the game. Now Antoine Foreman will find some little bit of space there up the middle of the field and he'll pick up the first down after picking up 13 yards on that catch. Now Corey Young is going to receive this jet sweep and he's got some space. He's only got one guy to beat and he will beat him but will be caught from behind. But that is going to be a 45 yard rush from Corey Young. We need to have him be big in this game as he is our biggest star on our offensive side of the ball other than Jaron Walter. And speaking of him, he'll pick up nine yards on a very good rush up against this front four. And that will set up second down and one. So now Carlos Lee filling in for Dwayne Novak. He'll receive the handoff, our dual threat athlete from, last, from our recruiting. He will pick up the first down and two yards on that play. Now Jared Walter on the screen pass and he will walk into the end zone with the very good blocking. That's a touchdown for the Wolves. Very good start to the game as we will take the 7-0 lead already in the game. And some studio updates. Syracuse pulling off a big time upset against Penn State. That will probably knock Penn State out of the conference championship game as they are competing against Ohio State and that might just knock them out of the running 
And again, another update, California, they're on a roll after beating us. They'll beat Fresno State, and that is a good showing from Cal after starting the season off four. So now we've got Jalen Daniels. He's going to be picking up a first down on that 11-yard rush. We need to make sure we keep an eye on him or else he could have an absolute hey, absolute heyday against us. Now Dallas DeLoach will again go and make a tackle as Jalen Daniels finds another open spot on the read option and he'll pick up eight yards on that one. So now the tight end will pick that one up and Herbert Noel will, he will bounce off of his tackle and pick up the first down, Jared Casey, the tight end on that one. So now Jalen Daniels keeping this one again, and he's got some open space and will be brought down by Joe Paris, but not before picking up eight yards on his keeper. Second down and two here for Jalen Daniels, and this time we'll hand it off to Neal on that one, and he will pick up one yard, not getting the first down. Very good stop by Hall on that one. Third down and one. Jalen Daniels is going to keep this one from the power option, and that will be called short on that one. They do not get the home cooking on that one, and they will elect to kick the field goal. Very deep one, 50-yarder. Ian, the field goal kicker, will slot that one right on through, making this a 7-3 to three game. Let's do your update here. Washington State will continue their undefeated streak as they will beat down on San Diego State. That will keep San Diego State near the bottom and keep Washington State up near the top. And our other Mountain West game going on this week, Alaska and San Jose State, that one is just kicking off. So now after that touchdown, Timothy Strickland will hand the ball off to Carlos Lee as he comes into the game and he will pick up eight yards on his second rush of the game. We definitely like having Carlos Lee, our true freshman athlete, as an option. So now Timothy Strickland will keep this one and he'll pick up the first down following his blocker and he will pick up four yards and picking up the first down. So now Timothy Strickland will find Jaron Walter on the swing pass and that will go nowhere and that will set up a third down and long on our second drive of the game as the clock continues to tick down. Timothy Strickland, he's going to find nobody open on this one and the coverage does a work and the front four finally find their way to Timothy Strickland and that will force a Wolves hunt. And Jalen Daniels is going nowhere on that one as Dallas Deloach picks him up, reading him on the read option. And he will just get this one away to Hishaw Jr. And he will pick up the first down on the dunk down. And that will push the ball forward for the Jayhawks. Pump fake on this one and he will throw into triple coverage. Herbert Noel will knock that one down. Very good defense on the pump fake on the play. Third down and seven here. And Dallas Deloach reads the screen. That's why he's one of the best middle linebackers in the nation. And he will stuff that one up as they will try a 55-yarder on this one. And that will just miss on that one. Field goal kicker will miss it. And this game will stay 7-3 to three after the good defensive stop. And now the fake on the jet sweep to Corey Young. And Antoine Foreman will find some open space on his deep curl. He'll pick up 16 yards, moving us into Jayhawk territory. Timothy Strickland back to pass and he will dunk this one down to Brady Ferguson and that's going nowhere to the tight end and that will again create a third and long. And then we'll hand this ball off to Jaron Walter and he will pick up three yards. That seems like it's a four, go for it on fourth down decision but they will not and they will punt the ball away playing field position instead. But Devin Neal will try and take that one away, making that decision. And he will pick up 25 yards and taking them right back to where the ball was if they had gone for it 
That is a big time pickup from Devin Neal on the play. And Jalen Daniels will keep this one and he will be tackled by Marcus Owens as he's being blocked and that will lose two yards on the play. Third down and long here. Jalen Daniels running out of time on this one and he will tuck this one across his body. Carlos Lee will come and pick that off. Nobody's in front of him. He could take this one but will be cut from behind by the offensive lineman. But that is a great return from Carlos Lee and even better coverage and pressure by this Wolves defense as they create that turnover on the very good Jalen Daniels. So now they will try and pick up a chunk play on this one from the, an explosive play, but no things open and Timothy Strickland will find just that little crease up in the protection and he will pick up the first down and 13 yards off of the interception. Jaron Walter will now receive the handoff and he will pick up another good chunk of yards as the running game has been picking up so far. And that will be another nine yard game for Jaron Walter. And then a little short pass from Sheldon Carey will pick up six yards and that will be a first down setting us up inside the 10 yard line goal to goal. Three minutes left in the second half, and Jaron Walter will receive this handoff, and he's got the edge, and he will go and take that one to the end zone. That's a touchdown for Jaron Walter, his second touchdown on the day, but his first rushing touchdown. That will give the Wolves a 14-3 lead in this first half as we kick the ball off to the Jayhawks, and Arnold will take this one from his goal line. And that is good coverage, but we'll pick up 30 yards on that return, setting up on the 31. The short pass as Skinner beats Herbert Noel off the line. That's going to be a 15-yard pickup and a first down. Very good throw and decision by the Jayhawks and very good find by Jalen Daniels. First down and 10 as the clock is under three minutes now. And Luke Grimm will get his first catch of the day. And that's going nowhere. He's going to lose a yard. Very good defense by the Wolves to keep an eye on him and keep that screen pass contained. Third down and long on this one. And Devin Neal will receive the screen play. And that's going nowhere as now the Wolves have a shot at adding to their point total against the best team we will face all year they will get coffin hunted on that one and brady ferguson will get him out of the shadow of the end zone that's a 14 yard pickup and a very good pickup to set this drive off jared walter will receive this green play on this one he'll stay in bounds which will cause the clock to continue to tick down but he will pick set up seven yards on that screenplay as we again continue to push this ball down the field Jared Walter receiving the inside handoff he'll pick up another good chunk the offensive line blocking has done a fantastic job since that first drive Timothy Strickland is going to force this one and Dabney is going to pick this one off very ill-advised throw on that one but the pressure coming in quick and he was forced to make a play and he decided to throw that one to Dabney. Not a very good decision on that play. And that will be a very unfortunate turnover before the half. Now it is up to the defense to try and force a field goal here and keep this game short. Hishaw will receive that catch. And he'll pick up six yards as the clock will continue to tick down. But Kansas will use their timeout to preserve the time. So now Jalen Daniels will keep this one as he finds some open spaces. Everybody else was taken out of the play, but he'll pick up 13 yards and move that ball into goal to go territory. 30 seconds and Kansas has one timeout to go. Jalen Daniels now back to pass and that one will be read by Dallas Loach knocking the ball out of the receiver's hand. That's a good stop on that one. Second down and goal. Screenplay is not going to go anywhere on that one as that is red again and he will just chuck that one to the end zone and now they go to the power formation 
Jalen Daniels will toss this one to Casey, but that's going to be stopped, and Billings will use their timeout. That is a good defensive stop from the Wolves as they force the field goal, and that one will go through. But that will take us to half as the Wolves are now up 14-6, to six, an eight-point lead going into halftime. Very good showing from the Wolves so far in this game. I think that this team has played very well so far in this game. This is the best team that we will face all year, and we are meeting the task so far. Very good chunk plays. Our defense has been outs outstanding, forcing three field goals so far in this game, or four, against one of the most high-powered offenses in the nation. This is a great showing, and... Alaska is in a dogfight with San Jose State. We will need to keep an eye on this one as this could be a big time upset if San Jose State pulls it off. But we will get this second half going as we will kick the ball off to the Jayhawks as they defer to the second half and they will start this second half from their own 25 yard line. And this game is going, and Devin Neal will go on second down, and he will all be stuffed down on that one, and that will force a third down and short already in this game. Jalen Daniels is going to receive this one, and he's going to be absolutely blasted by Dallas Deloach. That's going to be a fourth down, and they will punt the ball back to the Wolves. Very good defense. Again, we live by our defense. Terran Brothers looks like he's going to have a good time to find some space. And he's got some wide open space. He's going to take this one all the way to the end zone. That's going to be a touchdown for the Wolves. Terrence Brothers does it again. But our coverage will let us down again as Marquis McClellan will be called for clipping. And that will send us back to our own 25 yard line as we will now start this drive after that fantastic return from Terrence Brothers and Jaron Walter will pick up five as we are continuing to march down the field. Corey Young will drop the third down play and that will send the ball back to the Jayhawks. That should have been caught. That's something Corey Young has struggled with all year is his reliability when somebody is close, that has been a problem so far. And now Thomas has got some wide open space and he's gonna continue to break tackles and will finally be forced out of bounds by McLeod on the play. Jalen Daniels on that draw play, that is very well set up. Devin Neal will pick up seven yards as that was a very good design on that first down, picking up a good chunk of yards and moving them closer to that midfield line. And Jalen Daniels will cross that midfield point, and that will be a first down for the Jayhawks as Dallas Deloach picks up his 10th tackle on the game as he has been asked to cover everybody. And Joe Paris will try and make up for his play and help. Dallas to loach out, picking up his sixth tackle on the game. Now Luke Grimm will find some wide open space, and that will be an 8-11 yard pickup. Very good start from them. And now Jalen Daniels will be tackled for a loss. That's going to be Hall, Michael Hall on that one, and that will force another field goal for the Jayhawks. This one again deep, and this one will miss as well. Fantastic defensive stop from the Wolves. They have been asked all season to come up big, and they continue to do so all year. Absolutely love this defense. They have set us up for success, and now Corey Young will find some wide open space, and he'll pick up 22 yards on the play, making up for his drop pass on the last drive. So now we're looking at first down and 10 in Jayhawk territory. Jaron Walter had some wide open space in the middle of the field, but will be brought down by Dabney on that one. 
as they hurry up to the line on the last play. Now third down and seven. Timothy Strickland is going to come up just short. They're going to rule him short as he picks up six yards. Now it is a decision to make of going for it or kicking the field goal. 47-yard field goal if they do end up going for it. And they will end up choosing to elect to trust Demetrius Mathis. He'll toss this one up and that will fall just short. That is a disappointing miss from Demetrius Mathis. And we will come away with nothing. Again, asking our defense to come up huge for us. So now Devin Neal will keep this one in. He'll find some wide open space and will be finally brought down by Herbert Noel. But that will be a 26-yard pickup, moving them into Wolves territory. Jan Jalen Daniels keeping this one, and he will. Dallas will miss the tackle, and he will pick up 14 yards. He has had a heyday on these read options. But Dallas Deloach will come and meet him on the line at the backfield. That's a loss of four. Big time play by Dallas Deloach. Third down and long on this one. Devin Neal will just get the screenplay and that will come up short. Forcing another Jayhawk field goal. This has been huge for us all day. Are these field goals fifth one of the day? And that one will just be pushed just enough left. That's going to be another miss. His third miss on the day. Huge stop from the Wolves as we continue to force them to kick field goals instead of touchdowns. Now moving into the F-Twins formation as Corey Young will receive that jet sweep. And that will be a pickup of three again running the F twins and Corey Young will receive the handoff on this one and he will pick up a good chunk of yards 10 on the rush and he will get the first down going out of the F twins again Corey Young moving in motion this time Timothy Strickland's gonna keep it and that's going nowhere he will lose a yard on the play setting up second down and 11 out of the F twins again Corey Young in motion. He will receive the handoff on this one and he will beat the edge and will pick up six yards on the play that will set up a third and medium, third and five. Fox sitting down, Timothy Strickland. He'll find a little bit of space there. Sheldon Carey will go and fight and pick up the first down, the sure handed Sheldon Carey. We have not used him very much all year, but when we do, he has come up huge. Jaron Walter now receiving the handoff after the Corey Young motion out of the F-Twins. He'll pick up the first down. That's an 11-yard pickup. He has found lots of holes today. Corey Young will keep this one on the F-Twins motion and he'll pick up three yards on the play. Trying to roll this defense to sleep with that F-Twins. This time coming out of the split slot. Third and eight as we the coverage is very good and the dunk down is what is forced and they will pick up five on the play so now looking at fourth down and five that's not the play we want so we will call the timeout with four minutes to go this could be a big time play timothy strickland back to pass and the time is run out he had wide open re receivers but the Blitz comes and meets him. That will be forcing the turnover on downs. Very big stop for the Jayhawks as this is still a one possession game with a touchdown and a two point conversion with the Wolves only up eight. And that could have been picked off. That had a chance as Cook, Khalid Cook on that one had a chance to make the play on the ball. Now Jalen Daniels will find Luke Grimm. What a catch by Luke Grimm. He picks up 25 yards, but more importantly, that's a first down for the Jayhawks on third down and 10. And they will keep their hopes alive on that diving catch from Luke Grimm. He is a one of the best wide receivers in the Mountain West for a reason. And it was shown there. Devin Neal will now pick up four yards on that rush. 
as the clock is now approaching the three minute mark. Second down and six, Jalen Daniels will find Casey, the tight end on that one as he will pick up 12 yards and the first down as we were unable to find him in the coverage. Now he moves in motion and this time Devin Neal will receive the handoff. He'll break off the first tackle and will pick up the first down. That's an 11 yard rush as he was met just before walking into the end zone. Now we've got Skinner moving in motion. He'll move into the backfield. They'll fake it to him. Jalen Daniels, open space, but will be met by Pierre Fuerta, but nobody's guarding Daniel Hishaw. That will be a touchdown from the Jayhawks. 14 to 12, the all important two point conversion coming up on this play. So they've got a trips on the right. Jalen Daniels, he's back to pass. How do you leave him wide open? Trevor Cardell is wide open in the corner of the end zone. He'll pick up the two point conversion. And this is now a tied game. I don't know how you miss him. He was wide open. So now we've got two and a half minutes for us to go down the field. Terrence Brothers receiving this one three yards deep in his own end zone. He's got some wide open space. He'll pick up some blocks. He's got one guy to beat. He'll beat him. He will outrun everybody. He'll take this one to the end zone and we'll go celebrate with our fans in the corner of the end zone. That's going to be a touchdown for the Wolves. Huge play from Terrence Brothers. Extra point will make this a seven possession game and we will do so. 21 to 14, Terrence Brothers, that's his second return for the day, the first one that counts. 2.20 to go, we'll kick this one back to the Jayhawks. They'll get this one three yards outside of their end zone. Thomas will be met and that will be a 31 yard pickup. Two minute drill now for Jalen Daniels and they'll start this one off with the Devin Neal counter and he'll pick up a good chunk of yards, 13 to be exact, as he has had a heyday on our defense, which is not typical for us. But trying to shut down on Jalen Daniels and this one, McClellan's in the game after the defense is tired after the Terrence brothers pick up and that will be a first down. McClellan, our true freshman, out there and does not find the bubble. Second down and 10 here for Jalen Daniels. Two to go. Arnold will beat Carlos Lee, and that will be a 15-yard pickup as they will again march down the field under two minutes to go. Jalen Daniels back to pass. He's got plenty of time. He'll just dunk this one to Jared Casey as he picks up his fourth catch on the day. Second down and five, under a minute with 90 seconds left in this game. Jalen Daniels will keep this one and he will pick up the first down. That will momentarily stop the clock. We might need to start thinking about calling timeouts. First down and goal, 60 seconds to go. Jalen Daniels, he will be met by Dallas Deloach and that will set up second down and goal. Kansas will use their first timeout this time instead. 58 seconds to go. Jalen Daniels will keep this one on the read option. Dallas Deloach meets him. Second, third down now after picking up two yards. His 15th tackle on the day. He has been asked to do a ton. Third down and goal. Big time play. They've got two plays to go. And this time, Devin Neal will keep it. And He'll find the end zone. That's going to be a touchdown for the Jayhawks. Now they are an extra point away from tying this game with 50 seconds to go. Very important kick here, and that will go straight through 21 to 21 as the team celebrates as they are again tying this game up. And they'll kick this one to Terrence Brothers. Very brave of them as he's got an extra three yards from the last play and the coverage was much better on this one. So now we're going out of the F-Twins again. Corey Young moving, moving in motion, and this time it's a screen play. Jaron Walters wide open. He'll pick up a block. That's a huge play from Jaron Walter. 40-yard pickup. Kansas only has one timeout left, and that is moving us even closer to field goal range. We set that play up. 
We were looking to do that the whole game. Setting up the little screen play and it worked to perfection. They left that side of the field wide open expecting a Corey Young handoff. And instead, it was a Jern Walter screen play. As we continue to try and move closer into field goal range, we are just outside of Demetrius Mathis's range. So we will use a timeout to try and preserve just a little bit of time to move us closer into his range. 30 seconds to go. Jaron Walter healed. Go get a first down and pick up 14 yards. We are definitely in Demetrius Mathis's range now as the clock will move down as we try and center the ball. And Jaron Walter will pick up two. And we will use the timeout with two seconds to go. One field goal away from beating the best team we'll face all year. One of the top teams in the Mountain West. Demetrius Mathis has a chance to redeem himself from his missed field goal here. He is iced. Two seconds to go. This is for the game. He'll wind up and we'll kick this one. And that one's looking like it's going through. It will go through. The Wolves will win this one. What a win for the Wolves. The best team we'll face all year. And that's a W. We came into Lawrence at night and we have shocked the Jayhawks. After losing to California last week, we come back and beat the best team in the conference. Jaron Walter with a huge day, especially that screenplay on the to get us even closer to field goal range with 50 seconds to go. What a win. Great play calling there to set up that play. And you got to absolutely give credit to the defense in this one. They shut down the Jayhawk offense, a top 10 offense in the nation. And we held them to five field goals. And they were deep field goals, which results in the three missed ones on the day. Huge win for the Wolves. I couldn't be more thrilled about this game. It was very disappointing to lose last week to the Cow Bears, but we came back and won this one. That fantastic play by our defense. We really rely on our defense and I've said that all year we really rely on our defense this was a top 10 offense in the nation with one of the better dual threat quarterbacks with a wide receiver that is fantastic great backfield one of some of the best backfield in the nation and we held our own five deep field goals was the difference in this game our offense played just as well as they could have against one of the better teams that we'll face all year. And we did absolutely fantastic. Credit to Terrence Brothers as well. He was huge in this game. He has hit his role hard after being benched from his cornerback role. So quick look at the recruiting board. We are still sitting with Nicholas Moore and John Rowe, but it's looking like we're going to lose this battle to Minnesota Tech on Nicholas Moore, which will leave us with just the center to go. So looking ahead to next week, it doesn't get any easier. We'll be facing the other top team in the Mountain West in Washington State. Now they are the be better throwing team in the Mountain West outside of Alaska. And if there's one thing we've learned so far in this season is that we struggle against the pass. Now we did great this last week, but we are going up against one of the better quarterbacks and one of the better wide receivers in the nation. We, one of the top leaders in the nation for their stats on the passing yards and the receiving yards two of the best receivers in the nation as well. So advancing this week into week 12, looking at the top 25, the Mountain West is showing out in this top 25. 
with Alaska receiving a vote, first place vote, and Washington State also approaching a top 10 team. They are, we are going to face a top 15 team in the nation coming up in this next week. That is going to be saying something. So we're going to be doing, after this, we're going to be looking at the conference standings as the power uh, four conferences are approaching the end of the season and looking at the Pac-12, BYU are going to be the team that will be relegated after losing to Oregon State this last week and that will force them down to the Mountain West. So looking at the Big 12 here, the teams that are in danger, SMU is the most danger and Houston and TCU have the next chances. A lot of lot to play for in that division there and it looks like Oklahoma is one game away from being the conference the division champion UCF and Tennessee are the teams in most danger to be relegated so far UCF needs to win some games if they are going to hold on to that spot now looking at the ACC here we've got Cincinnati and West Virginia that are in the danger spots Purdue are gonna be safe they have performed fairly well in the conference the Big Ten is going to be looking absolutely wide open right now. There's, It's not as congested as it was last year with six teams vying for that top spot and four teams for the bottom, but there is everything to play for. This is going to be a big game this next week. NC State and Wake Forest, they will play this next week, and that's going to be a huge game. Miami, Ohio with an undefeated conference record. That's looking like they might be the team that is going to be in that team that's going to be promoted. Now looking at the independents, we've got Colorado State who are basically the team that is looking like they're going to move up. We've got other teams to be looking at here. Colorado State is well ahead in first place. Old Dominion's up there, but they are not going to be eligible for promotion and the other teams that are looking like they've got a shot right now are Wyoming, Southern Mississippi, and Navy again this year. The only thing that that has to happen with these three teams is that they, they have to win out the rest of the year if they are going to be catching Colorado State. So now looking at the Conference USA Central this next week with Rice and Northern Illinois, that's gonna be a decider game and Rapid City and Air Force will face off and Utah State will also face off against Rapid City. That could be big games that are gonna be coming up this upcoming weeks. Temple looking like they are looking very safe in their division and some wide open in the other division. So now looking at the Mountain West Conference, Washington State and Alaska and Kansas will all face each other here at the end of the year and they will have absolutely everything to play for with the end of the season coming up. San Diego State and Fresno State are the teams that are going to need to show out. They are in the most danger right now and we can absolutely love the fact that our name is not the name that is going to be said right there last year we were in super danger and this year we control our destiny we've got san diego state and fresno state to finish off the year and we could absolutely guarantee our spot with just a couple more wins we beat washington state we're pretty much safe if we can beat either San Diego State or Fresno State, that's safety as well. Couldn't be any more thrilled with how the season is going so far. We knew we weren't competing for the top spot this year, but we were hoping to get our team prestige back. We need to be above 80 in the rankings, right now sitting at 60, so we are looking nice. Need to continue to win though, because we want that prestige back and help our recruiting out. But if you've enjoyed this so far, like and subscribe if you are new, and we will see you next week.